Hello, and welcome to a session of Microscope uh, for the Gauntlet. Uh, this is a modified version of Microscope where we are going to be building a fantasy city, particularly a, a city with some serious magic to the background, kind of high fantasy. Um, this comes from uh, Darren and I having a brief chat about urban fantasy and, and our love of, of city games. And uh, so uh, uh, we wanted to, to kind of try our hand at building this. Um, this comes from Microscope and it is a modification of that. I've used this a couple of times to build campaigns. I've used Microscope in general to build campaigns. Uh, so I've got kind of an outline of those rules. If you're interested, there are a bunch of variations of Microscope uh, in the Microscope Explorer book. Uh, this is also part of the Gauntlet Hangout, so just be aware that we will be using the X card as a safety tool for content, uh, for objectionable material, for tone, all of those things. Um, uh, one, there's a section of the game where we're doing collaborative work, talking about things, kind of hashing things out, and then when we get to the kind of the sequence things, that's when we let people go and we ask clarifying questions or we can X card something if we think it is it is off base. Uh, this is part of the Gauntlet Hangouts, uh, uh, which is an online gaming community, which is almost up to 200 games a month, uh, which is crazy. Uh, and you can find out more about that at gauntlet-rpg.com. Uh, we have these online games, we have a Patreon, we have a blog, uh, we've got multiple podcasts. We've got a zine. It's it's lunacy. Um, so there you go. Um, and uh, so uh, we are going to go ahead and uh, kind of get get started on this. Uh, you will hear us if you're watching this. Um, you will hear us talking about writing things into a document. We're working from a Google Doc. Uh, when all of this is said and done, I will put a, a view link uh, to the doc. Um, uh, in the, the show notes uh, for that, so you can see what we're doing. Um, but otherwise, you may find this a little like, wait, what's going on? Uh, but we'll, we'll see how that is. Um, so I'm going to actually open up the document in my thing here. Close these things out. Um, so what we're going to start with here, um, and I just want to talk a little bit about process. Um, we're going to start with talking about what what are the major themes like like are there are there big structural features of this city that we want to have established big overarching things like like it's flying um, or that kind of level of things or particular themes that we want to explore within that city. And we're going to start that and that's a collaborative uh, work. But I will be going around. I will go. What do you think? And I'll be kind of managing that that uh, conversation. After we do that, then we're going to talk about the palette, which involves things that would normally be in this kind of game that we don't want to see, or things that might not normally be in the game that we do want to see. This is, again, a collaborative section. We'll, we'll be asking people individually, and then we'll be talking about what that implies for the setting and whether we think that works. After we do that, uh, get that set up, then we essentially do the, the sequence of turns. And uh, on your turn, you're going to be adding something to the city. There are three levels that we work with. At the top level, there are neighborhoods, um, essentially areas of the city that you'll give a name to and maybe give us a, a little brief description of. And you can do that verbally, and you'll want to type a little bit up for that in the actual document. Below that, um, uh, the next level down are locations or features like like there's a well, or there's a particular shop, um, or there's a, a magical statue, those kinds of things. And those are nested underneath that. That's that second level down. Finally, there's a third level that goes beneath those locations, um, which is rumors or persons. Rumors don't have to necessarily be true, but these are things people have, have heard about that or a particular person associated with that place. And again, for each of these, you'll, you'll give it a name or a brief description. Uh, uh, identifier, and then a little description, just a sentence or two. Um, this is a, a heavy modification from Microscope. We're not doing, Microscope has a, a thing where you establish whether something is light or dark. 
whether it's 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 bad or good. We're not going to do that. We're going to let that that uh, uh, be in the hands of of whoever. Um, and we'll we'll do that in rounds. Um, are there any questions before I roll into that? Okay, um, then uh, let's talk about theme and concepts. Uh, as I said, I, we, we, starting with a basic premise, one is high fantasy, um, relatively high level of magic, gods, monsters, etc. We touch those are forgotten realms, planescape, ankle kite. Uh, there are multiple peoples, including the classics. Um, and then at some point in the future, we may come back to do another microscope session to do a low fantasy kind of version of the city in a different era. Um, so that's what we're going to begin with. Um, so I am, you're now going to see me call on people. Um, uh, in, but it's still a free thing. So anybody can, can jump in at any point during this themes and concepts. Darren. Oh, look, here, I'm putting you right in the hot seat. I love um, anything that occurs to you that, that you'd like to put forward as, as like a big scale concept. <clears throat> hmm. Um, let's see. I would like, um, I, mean, I don't know if this is big enough, but uh, whatever. Um, I would like the city to be like dense. I don't want it to be this like idealized medieval city with like wide avenues. <laughs> um, I want it to be dense. I want it to be packed with people. Like there's a reason the city will have grown and why people are moving there, being born there. So okay. I want to like see that. Yeah, I, I think I think that's a, a a great theme. Is everybody cool with that? I'm just gonna go into. I'll type this part in here. So we'll put density as as a theme there, um, and we'll talk about what that means. Do they grow? Is, is it just one level? Is it grown up, grown down? Um, Josh, let's. Do you have any thoughts about what you'd like to see as as themes or concepts for this? Um, I always enjoy like the costs or repercussions of using magic not not that it's always bad or or good you know but that there's some kind of um exchange going on there um so i, I think it's fun to deal with what it takes to use magic okay uh so the questions of, of so what takes Okay. Yeah, I like I like that. That seems like a a, a good one. Um, a, as Darren said, a costly magic sparkle, um, uh, and that's uh, that kind of economy is always interesting to see. Um, uh, Leandro, uh, thoughts? Um, this kind of goes with what Darren said about being dense. I kind of like the idea of the city being really old and feels like it's built on the bones of not something. I don't know, but like bones of like different civilizations. It's like, it's like, it's, you can feel it in certain parts of the city, but it's like, it's maybe where we find it's a state of renewal at the moment. It's kind of, this kind of inspired, like I, I was in London recently and the way old and new just abuts with each other is fascinating. So the way kind of like history is alive, but it maybe it's being paved over. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of like stuff maybe people have forgotten or people are trying to dig up or trying to cover up. So that, that, that sort of like that sense of, you know, old history uh, being in the city. I, I like, I like that. Is everyone uh, cool with that? Um, I also like the way you said there, the idea of the old and the new adjacent that, that we've got these old things and then suddenly we, we, we step into where things have been built up. Um, uh, that's, that's great. Michael. I think it would be uh, really cool if this city was uh, particularly diverse in some way. Um, maybe it, it sits in a crossroads. Maybe it's like a conqueror's like like headquarters type thing. And so there's lots of like subjugated peoples there or something. Um, I want there to be lots of different influences, like kind of trying to coexist and, and mesh together in one place. So there's some structural reasons why it's a diversity, why we have all these different peoples and cultures there. Yeah. Okay. Or maybe there's just like a like 
a particular feature that many different people are drawn to. But yeah, I want it to be a sort of a melting pot kind of okay. place. So we'll, well, let's put that in as a theme, and then in play, we'll, we'll figure out exactly what it is that oh, has, sure. has uh, created that. Um, uh, let me think of, uh, of course, I've been doing talking here. Um, what I would add uh, as a, a theme, um, I think I, I, I do like the idea of the, the class struggle um, the the high and the low, um, I, I like that in my urban fantasy, and uh, I just I think I'd like to have that theme presented there. If that's okay with you guys, and I'll swing back around, and I'll ask I'm gonna do another once around. If you're like, no, I'm good with what we've got, you can say that. Or if you have another idea, you, we can also talk about that. So uh, either way. So Darren, if I swung back to you. Oh, I, <laughs> that's high fantasy. Let's see. Um, I like the, like, this idea that technology is like out there. <laughs> Maybe there's like a mad scientist who has like a steam engine going, <laughs> that sort of thing. So I like that. Uh, if we have magic and like what's the cost of magic or like having this contrast to of like um, there might be another way to do things in the world so so like fringe fringe science yeah 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 that's good yeah because I don't want to center it because it's I want the high fantasy primarily but I don't know some of those ideas like a train maybe somewhere in the world <laughs> Well, we'll say like like fringe science and magic. Maybe we've got the fringe science, uh, yeah. science out there, and maybe there's some alternate approaches to magic that are are in conflict. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. with our established thing. Okay, I, I like that. Um, Joshua. Um, well, Darren stole my next one. So my next next one, I think, and this might be more of like a palette thing, but mm -hmm. I like um, when there are intelligent creatures that are not. Uh, bipedal like they don't have to be animals necessarily but you know just different kinds of um intelligent races intelligent they should be topic talking animals but they don't have to be talking animals absolutely they should be talking trees <laughs> uh so intelligent creatures uh non-humanoid races does that seem like a good way to put that yeah i think so non-humanoid peoples Okay. Um, yeah, we can figure out what those what those are actually going to look like in play. Um, uh, uh, that's a that's a classic. Um, now I'm thinking about that. I got that in my head. Leandro, um, anything else you want to add? Oh, sorry about that. Someone just tried to walk in. Um, no, I don't think anything else. I think stuff I'd want to do is is, is more palette stuff. I'm, okay. Yeah. I really like all the stuff we have so far. That sounds great. Michael, anything else? Uh, I think I'm getting into palette territory myself as well. Okay. So I'm good with what we have. Uh, and I'm I'm good with that. Darren, do you have anything else to add or do you want to move to the palette? Okay. Uh, Josh? Okay. Uh, so we'll go ahead and move to the palette then. Um, and uh, since I've got a bullet point, this is on the next page of the, the document. Um, uh, and we can be, be loose on this. One of the things is, is that, um, the, the, the sort of microscope book says only put in kind of things that wouldn't normally be seen, but we can be a little bit loose on that. We're, we're putting in flags. Um, but we're also, you know, maybe pulling in things that might not be expected on, on that. Um, so Darren, if I come to you again, look at this, what a terrible total person he is i won't make you go first in the microscope sort of uh, oh, that's uh, fine. okay <laughs> sherry gets mad at me if i make her go first a lot so i always have to check in no i don't mind um so darren if uh, is there something that you want to add to the palette um or uh, uh to uh or or ban in the palette okay um <clears throat> i want to ban this like essentialist view of of you know traditionally what our races 
Um, I don't want like elves to be these supremacist, ultra beautiful assholes. <laughs> and I don't want dwarves to be these strange, like perfectionists who have to work. Um, I want to, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me just start there. I feel like I'll, I'll start like banning <laughs> a lot yeah, of no, things. I, I think an essentialist, idea. so any particular people, dwarf, elf, or whatever, is multifaceted. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think that's that's fair. And uh, uh, the, the kind of thing we like, and, and that also gets us contrasting different versions of, of that. Yeah. Um, as we saw in Forbidden Lands, I, I like doing that and <laughs> inverting those things. Yes. Well, and a lot of these properties do it anyway, but then it contradicts itself in the text. So yes. like elves and d and it's like, oh my God, there's these people who just ruined everything and they're beautiful and they're always chaotic good, but then there's evil elves <laughs> in the stories. Like, okay. Yep. <laughs> Sorry, that's my I, I, I dig it. Um, uh, Josh, uh, something that you want to add or bang in? Um, I think I guess this is um, <laughs> high fantasy is such a loose thing, you know. Right. Uh, it can be. I I would like to add, if it's not kind of already in our thoughts, the um, possibility of like multiple uh, realities, like okay. multiple planes, or um, you know, other dimensions, kind of thing. Which I guess we would get to with the magic and the science as well, but um, that kind of stuff. Okay, so multiple realities. I'll just put that in that that is a, a feature in this, and that that people have permission then fictionally to draw in those concepts during okay. play. Okay, awesome. I think that's that's a a, a good thing. Um, Leandra, um, can I add artificial intelligence? Oh yeah, absolutely. I want to see people creating new life. <laughs> And the ramifications of that. Okay. Like uh, both mechanical and like alchemical, or yeah. Think? Okay. Whatever people think uh, uh, they need to do to create new life. Okay. Oh, I like that. I like that very much. Um, Michael? I would like for there to be a lot of magical infrastructure. So. That could be some sort of portal system, or maybe the stoplights talk to you, or something along those lines. Just lot like little small details everywhere of how people have adapted magic into the infrastructure would be really cool to see. But both for for good and for ill. Oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> so get to the magical surveillance state. Um, right. Multiple um, realities of bureaucracy. <laughs> um. Uh, I think, um, let's see what I want to do. I think I want to play off of what, what you've said with magical infrastructure. I, I like the idea of that the, the, there exists the magic or architectural technology to build upwards. Like things can be super tall. Um, like that, that kind of, of tech is is present and uh, uh, available, but build call. That's the simplest way I can put that. Darren, let's swing back around to you. I was thinking of saying more things to ban, but I just don't know. I want those the essentialist view is I think good for me on bans, but I want to add. Uh, dragons. I just want to blanket add dragons. I want dragons around. <laughs> okay. Um, so, uh, so what you're saying is common. Dragons are common. Oh, hmm, do I is that what you're saying, or or what are we saying here? Um. Hmm, that's interesting. I don't know. They can be common, maybe if we if we find that that's cool. But I just want to. I'll put lots of dragons. <laughs> How does that sound? <laughs> and we can we can play with that as we will. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, Josh, I would like to ban the 
one evil threat that everyone is worried about. Okay. Like, there should probably be like 50 evil threats that people are worried about, not just like one. I like that. That's a, that's a, a good one. Lots of, of chaotic stuff. Uh, Leandro? Oh, Josh kind of took the one I was thinking about, which is, you know, some sort of, like, I don't want to have to deal with primordial, well, the, no, actually, no. That, that I think Josh kind of covered all of that bad. Like, that sort of primordial evil threat. Okay. That unites everyone. Uh, come back to me in, in another round. I have something else to, to add. Okay, time. sure. So uh, pass on that one. Michael? I know that we have this different class structure, but I would like to ban slavery in, within this city. Okay. Like it's it, that's that's a, a a thing that runs through the different peoples is is uh, you know a ban against slavery. Uh, that that that's just a general cultural thing. Sure, or I mean, it's just kind of a theme I don't really want okay. to explore. No, I think that's fair. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think I want a to ban a like how do I put this? Uh, ban like like a hereditary ruler of the whole thing. Um, uh, uh, that there there's no like necessarily king of the city with a family and so on. We can have nobility and there can be different kinds of controls, but the idea of the hereditary king I'd like to, to leave off the table. Aaron? Come back to you. Um, let's see. I'm trying to think of how I want to phrase it. Let me just run it by the table and Please. see. <laughs> um, I, I'm thinking that I want the city in its pluralism to not be like, I don't want it to be organized in such a way that it's like this outwardly projecting imperial force. Like I kind of don't want to, I don't want the city to be like the center of like colonialism in a way. Okay. But I also don't necessarily want to like elide that from the world in total, right? Because I think that that could be one of the 50 threats. <laughs> so the city itself isn't a colonialist force. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. I think that's, a, that's a, a good one. It tells us something about how it's projecting its power and how it's establishing its, its uh, sense of things. Mm -hmm. Um uh, let's come back to you, Josh. Uh, kind of goes in with what Leandro was saying, but I um, want the world itself to be very old. I think uh, it gives us lots of room to play with history and stuff, and makes sense for Leandro's ideas for the way the city's built on top of itself and things like that. Yeah, uh, world is old. Uh, been around for a long time. We're we're at you know far far multiple levels of things, maybe cyclical things. Okay, I think that's a, a fair thing to establish. Um, Leandro? Um, no, I think uh, I, I, had, I had two things. I have one thing I wanted to add, one thing to bad, and I got both of them. Okay. For now, I'm pretty happy at this point. All right. Michael? I think I'm good too. I'm I'm set. Darren? Yes, I think I'm good. I got my dragons. Okay, off to get your dragons in there. All right. Um, so we are going to move uh, to the city itself, the, the next page. Um, you will see that I've got uh, the sort of outline format that a Google Docs uses, and I've got some versions you can just edit on those lines. Um, uh, when you add a new line, you can tab forward to, to get the, um, uh, the the spacing right. And then at the bottom, I've got a template in case we blow things up, which people will do um, uh, when I, from shared Google Docs. Um, so what we're going to do is 
uh, when we come to this part, uh, we're going to choose a lead player. They're going to be called the lens. And they are going to choose a, a theme, um, something that when we come up with things during play should reflect that, be connected to it, be, be a commentary on. It can be loosely related. Um, uh, it's, it's certainly up to you. And we should try, as we go through that round, to, to, to stick to that. The person who is the lens can choose to add one or two details. Uh, if, like, they could add a neighborhood and then a, lo a location, or they could add a location and a rumor, or they could add just one of those things. Um, uh, and you, you don't have to put two. It's, it's entirely up to you. Um, you'll give a name to it, give us a little descriptor, and then tell us. Uh, what you're thinking about. We'll then go in play order. Um, and the play order, you've already heard in general, uh, we're going to cycle through uh, Darren, Josh, uh, uh, Leandro, Michael, and then me is going to be the, the player that we're going to sustain uh, throughout the, the game. When we come back around to the person who was the lens, um, they can add one more element. Um, and sort of the last person before the lens is going to have uh, a chance to come up with an important faction, faith, or group for the city. And we'll put that sort of at the end. Um, and then it goes to the next player in turn order. Um, now, Darren, you did say that you were, you were up for being first. So, so I'm going to rescind my earlier statement and uh, uh, I'm going to let you start. And uh, uh, what do you want as the theme for for this round the theme i want for this round man um i want it to be oh, mm, ah, mm, mm. <laughs> <laughs> um i want it to be cohesion like okay. I want to, I want to see how the city is coming together, how the peoples are like coming together. Start off a little positive, right? That's great. That's a that's a good one. Um, all right, so uh, you can go ahead and 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 start as the lens, and you can add one or two things. Okay. And the rest of us will be be furiously thinking as you're <laughs> thinking myself. <laughs> and I am going to let you when you put your thing in, you type it in. Okay. Just so everybody knows that that's going to be our procedure for this. Okay. Um, well, I'll definitely start with a neighborhood. So we've got something. <laughs> um, <clears throat> yeah, I, wanna, I just want a bazaar. There's going to be like a massive, I think like both open and closed air sort of bizarre like stalls and everything outside of this but you can also walk into it and there's these like uh it's like arcade right with these like different positions where people buy like whatever they need for the day or the week or for someone's birthday um okay. is there is it just called the bizarre or is there a particular name oh yeah that should be a name oh man <clears throat> I don't know. I gotta warm up to names. I'm just gonna call the bazaar for now. Maybe we'll, we'll sneak a name in there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the uh, bazaar maybe is also interesting though, right? It's just spoken of as like a functional space. Like people are just going to the bazaar. Sure. Now, do you want to put a, a location beneath that, or or do you just want to establish a neighborhood? Um, man, I'm trying to like keep them separate so I don't collapse and be like, oh yeah, there's this person who works at this place who does this thing. <laughs> um, yeah, I do want to add a, a specific location in the bazaar though. <clears throat> and it's <laughs> weather bazaar. That's interesting. Um, a feature. 
Oh man, now I'm thinking even bigger. No, I want to add a place because I really I want to add this place. It's going to be, oh, I'm so not ready for names. This is like, the specific shop is like the, um, I don't know what they're like called, but they're like a blacksmith, but. Like a uh, foundry? Mm, maybe that's too big. Um, they like make like the din the dinnerware, <laughs> like silverware, like metal things, <laughs> but not like a metalsmith. Metalsmith, yeah, sure, that makes sense. <laughs> I don't know why I didn't think of that, but yeah. Um, I want to do that. What's it called? I want to. I want to give a name. I gotta start naming things. <laughs> oh, I just want it to be called Tungsten's. <laughs> Tungsten's um, anvil. That's cute, right? Tungsten's anvil. Uh, uh, a renowned metal smith. <laughs> That's what I'm going with. I like it. All right. Uh, so then we will we'll pass uh, play uh, to to Josh. All right. Um... So we talked about verticality earlier. So I imagine this bazaar has multiple levels, um, especially if it's a city that incorporates a lot of different cultures. So I, I like the idea of this kind of tower um, that's fairly wide, so it can fit lots of different shops, but it's like the food court of the bazaar. Um, and so you've got all these little shops in the tower um where people bake bread and all kinds of their cultural foods um what should we call it um hmm. maybe the firehouse oh okay i'm gonna go with that Awesome. I love the idea of a, of a giant food, vertical food court in the, the midst of that. I think that's great. And if it's a firehouse, I kind of imagine there being like the, the various cooking smoke fires coming out of it too. Yeah, I imagine there being some like uh, openings on the sides, even higher up. So people, like if they fly or whatever, could just stop in. Uh, almost like uh, in Fifth Element, the, the cabs like just come by oh, yeah. the stalls, you know? <laughs> that kind well, of that's thing. great. Uh, Leandro? Okay, so one of the things we didn't ban was taverns. So, we, 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 I mean, we're in a high fantasy city. We're still going to need like a tavern. Oh, yeah. So, uh, I think this tavern is one of the self proclaimed oldest buildings in the city. Um, and when you see it, it's, it's trying to have that charm of like oh late whatever century style um it it looks ramshackle but it looks like it's carefully manicured to look ramshackle so you can tell people own this place isn't just homely they're savvy um i think this tavern is called the king's watch and they're like oh people ask oh why is it called the king's watch and and the and each story is different. It always involves like some sort of old king or some old monarchy. And uh, can I add a rumor to it as I'm describing, or should I leave that for later on? You should leave that for later on. Generally, oh. the lens gets to do two nested things. Ah, All right, cool. So I'll just put it in there. Cool. 
Uh, Michael, let's come back to you. I'm going to add a person Ooh. to Tungsten's Anvil. Um, it's going to be Dwarf Tungburn and Sprackle Morstan. So Tungburn is a dwarf and Morstan is a gnome. And together they uh, create the most intricate silverware uh, in the Third Bazaar. Um, using their own special techniques, and they do have very small tools that they use, and they're also very small people, and uh, they took their two names and mashed them together to come up with a name for it. I like that. Shop. Mm -hmm. Very cool. All So I am going to add uh, another neighborhood, uh, and I'm going to go down one, and I'm going to and paste this in. So I think that there's an area of the city called the Finder's Quarter, even though it's, it's more than four places, everything's a quarter or whatever, or a neighborhood. Um, and it's the idea that the city is huge. It's massive. And if you arrive in the city and you're looking for someone, or you're looking for something, there are people that that's all they do um, is they they know what the, how the city's laid out. Um, uh, they know where to find things and you go there. Um, and that's where the people who know how to find things, either through magic or uh, hitting the street or whatever. And they often have specialties there uh, in the, the finder's quarter. So it's a, a kind of a, a useful resource uh, for people coming into town. Darren, you are the uh, uh, lens, so we swing back around to you, and you get another bite of the apple. Nice. I want to add another, another neighborhood. <laughs> I'm going to add the Underdark. <laughs> okay. but this Underdark is a new sewer system that's being installed. <laughs> oh, I like that. So the whole, you know, the underneath the city needs to be excavated, it needs to be surveyed, it needs to be explored. Who knows what mushrooms or, or critters you'll find down there. Maybe some housing for people who uh, like to live underground? Yeah. You know, if somebody has a certain sunlight sensitivity. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. I like it. And so now I was the last person to go before Darren, before the lens. So now I have to come up with a, a faction or a group or a, a, a deity. Um, So I'm going to put this copy I wrote here, and I'm going to go. Um, and I'll put a little title thing. So one of the things I think there is is a little bit like Elizabethan England, uh, Elizabethan London, that at the, the gates where the roads come in from various directions, there are 
inns and taverns that are right by the gates that are like if you've come from the desert and you're a new arrival in the city there is a tavern where people from those places uh, are and they help new new people come in and help them find their way or get connected with other people in their culture and so on and and that there's probably like like an organization of these outland taverns that probably uh, advocate for different groups and things like that. All right. So let's swing around now. Josh, now you are the lens. All right. Um, I think I would like the theme of this one to be um, kind of a look at the magical or or the fringe science uh, things going on in the city. Okay, that is our that is our remit for this round. All right, and then I start with two things, or yeah, up to two things. Up to two things. Okay, I'm gonna copy and paste. Um, so I would like to add a neighborhood called the Airy, and it is like way up at cloud level. Um, I imagine to get it that tall, it requires like constant magical maintenance to keep it, um, you know, immune from weather and just the fact that it's really, really tall. And it's a place that was specifically built to house any of the cultures or creatures that, you know, uh, fly a lot or like the um, temperature that would naturally be higher. So it's kind of like a part of the city that was made specifically for flying creatures, dragons, griffins, uh, whatever else that want to live up there, um, as well as you know anyone else who just has a preference. But uh, you know, it's built with all these little nooks and crannies and things, so things can fly in and out, and um, plenty of housing and all that good stuff. I like it. Let's see. What was that theme again? The um, magic or fringe science? Okay, okay, okay. Got yeah. Cool. So I'm not sure exactly what holds this up, like specifically magic wise, but I just imagine that there's like a glow about it. Uh, maybe it's harnessing electricity from, from the sky or something, who knows? All kinds of lightning rods, that kind of thing. Yeah, I like that actually, no, that's a good visual. Um, and I'm going to add a, a, uh, person to the underdark and, uh, I'll think of a name for them, but they are kind of this, uh, like mole uh individual who's no, really I'm gonna, good I'm gonna pause you here so we need to get a location or a feature first to attach a person to something. oh i see okay yeah. there has to we be do, an above yeah target. we do a, a step down on that okay thank you there's have many rules but they're little structural ones mm -hmm. let's see Oh, 
Okay, I think I'm gonna uh, skip my second one for now. Absolutely. Uh, and you'll get another bite of that when we come back around. Sounds good. Leandro? Uh, I wanna add a location to the Underdark. Um, it's called The Empty Space. And it's a it's a provable fact. It's a room that where whatever magic you perform in this room is undetectable. The problem is this room moves around. So it's really hard to find and it's heavily contested. So and so with this new under un sewer system being built. It's uh, it means it's easier to find now because usually it's underground and you can't find it. But now that there's a, the underdark is kind of being built out, it means that people contesting for that room is, you know, it's easier to do so. And obviously, if in a place full of like you know magic at a cost, when you have a place where you can do whatever you want, kind of unmolested, it's. You know, that's a valuable resource to have. So I'll add that there. Oh, wrong neighborhood. Andrew, does it also have no cost when you're in this room, or um, is it just Ooh. undetectable? Um, no, I think there's still cost. It is just undetectable. The thing, the thing that lets you do is like you know, whatever, whatever, whatever things you don't want people to find out, like I don't know, casting some illegal rituals or trying something out that. You don't want others to know, or like I don't, even simple stuff like I want to cast a you know detect charm on a on a person I know, but I don't want them to find out. Like even petty things like that. I think I'm done for now. All right. Uh, Michael. I would like to um, add a location to the finder's quarter. This place is called the Lunarium, and it is a stable portal to the moon. And it's used for trade and immigration and emigration. Awesome. You happy with that descriptor? Uh, yeah, I mean, unless you think it would no, be no, uh, I, just, I think that is that is perfectly fine. I just want to make sure before I moved on. So I am also going to add a location to the finders' quarters. Um, and so one of the things is that the city is old; it's had lots of magic and things like that. It's and in fact, it has its own magical gravity. Uh, and as a result, um, when someone dies here, their souls, their spirits can't get out because uh, they're stuck here. And so 
uh, people have to manually find those people's souls and actually carry them outside the boundaries of the city. Um, and so I've got this uh, group called, or, or like business called the Gaunt Trackers, and uh, they specialize in finding lost souls and, and ghosts for people. All right, Darren, swinging back to you here. <laughs> Very good, man. Um, I think that I... Okay, I want to add a rumor to the Gaunt Trackers. They're just too cool. I have to forsake all my other ideas. <laughs> um, the rumor is that the Gaunt Trackers are not moving people out of the city, but they're reanimating them to dig out the Underdark. Nice. Team Xers is on a track. Josh, we're going to come back to you. You are the lens. So uh, once again, you can uh, do one or two things. Right. Um, I'm going to add a rumor to the Lunarium. Um, and that is that the moon itself um, is dying and no one knows how to save it. Ooh. Or what's wrong with it, I guess. Obviously, this is uh, something that people from the moon don't want to admit. Um, and then um, Leandro inspired me. I'd like to add a location to the finder's quarters, uh, which I'm going to call the Crystal Hounds. And they are a group of mercenaries um, magic users who will, for a price, track down people who've uh, tried to cast spells on or about you. Is there like a statue in the city that we can't, citizens can't use magic on each other? <laughs> well, uh, it's, maybe it's not, it, maybe there's not anything wrong with it, but if magic is uh, so varied that there could be potential downsides, hmm. right? Uh, like uh, someone has a tracking spell on me, but I don't know it. True. Oh, man. All these information security concerns. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How to word that? Uh... Now you get into cryptomancer territory. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, that's true. I love it. All right. So, Darren, um, you're going to wrap up this round for us by coming up with a faith 
faction or group that exists in the city. Okay. Okay. Faction or group that exists in the city. Well, I want to dive right into it. The divine. Um, I think that... I think that there is um, a cult, maybe. <laughs> maybe they don't have full-on religious status, but there's a cult who um, worship an aspect of lightning as a divinity. Um, <laughs> I think that they're like maybe derisively called like whips or something because you see them on these contraptions up around the area when there's a storm trying to get struck by lightning, uh, which powers whatever they're on to like go like cracking across the sky. And, ooh, the, so that's like, right, they're called whips because of this like crack that like, I don't know, whatever. Um, so yeah, I think you see them like walking around with like lightning rods because <laughs> they want that that chance to be struck by lightning um there's a lot of there's a lot of i think like processions involving music with like lots of like deep bass sounds and gongs and you know re replicating thunder things like that um but what's their name <laughs> I'm very do, you, open. do you want to put a synonym for the the whip or a synonym for for the lightning? Yeah, synonym for the lightning is what I'm thinking. Mm. Um, let's see. Let me think. Oh, mm, let's do something like ozone or oxygen, right? Um, <laughs> uh, I know. I, you know what? This is fantasy bullshit. They don't know what science is. We're just gonna call them ozone. <laughs> Cult that worships an aspect of lightning. The Aries rod array. a long description <laughs> no that's fair awesome uh so we're gonna move on to the third round we'll do this round and then we'll take a break and we'll continue on um so leandro uh what do you want as the theme for this round um i kind of want to bring in the class struggle part of this city so i say this theme is high society okay Who's doing well, I guess. And add a neighborhood. And I think it is I'm not sure what the name is yet, but I think it's the it's the oldest district in the city. Um, if other districts are a mishmash of new things and old things, this one can say that no, we've We've kept to what the city was, at least in its, in its earliest juncture. It's a lot of like uh, buildings preserved uh, to last for a long time or kept on preserving. It almost has a weird funereal like museum feel, but the people who live there are very proud of the fact that you know they 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 live in like now we're the starting point of the city. We can say this city, even if it didn't grow out from us, we've been here from the start. 
Um, so, so people who don't people who can afford to live there are, you know, people who can afford to live there. Uh, uh, not sure the name of this yet. Because I'm imagining like it's a very like there's a, there's a gravity to the place because even though even if like it's it's you know terrible people kind of live there, there's still a gravity to like the history of the city being represented there. Uh, I'll come up with a name in a minute, but I have that description anyway. And I think I'll take my second element at the end as well. Okay. We got a name. I'm gonna I'm gonna make you put a name in before we move on. Okay. All right. Angels Row. There we go. Okay. Then Who's Michael. Angel? We don't know. We don't know. <laughs> move on to you. I will put a location within the airy. Um, called High Garden. And I think that like in a city that's so dense, it's very strange and probably impractical for there to be any sort of large space set aside just for a garden um, and sort of a park. Um, so I think that um, this place is technically a public area, but there are maybe people who are uh, sort of watchful of it and uh, maybe like hostile. <laughs> so if you come in and you're looking scruffy, I think the this, this sort of like general like knowledge is like, you know, don't, don't go there unless you're one of the muckety mucks kind of thing. It brings a whole new meaning to like high tea. But I'm bum. <laughs> All right. Uh, so I'm going to add a location under Angel's Row. Uh, and I'm calling it uh, Sekinova's Statue. And basically, the idea is that. If you're really wealthy, if your neighborhood is, is very well off, wealthy, then you can invest and pay to incarnate a neighborhood spirit, um, essentially a, 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 a little demigod to watch over and protect the area. Um, it's bound to a particular statue or location or things like that in the neighborhood. And Seknova is the oldest of these. 
um, and well on the way to being senile. Um, uh, and so the, the locals are right now uh, building a new statue to like usurp Secnova's position um, within the, the angel's row. In there. Da, da, da. We'll see. Oh, I spelled senility right. That's a shock to me. Um, all right. So, so that's my thing uh, to, to boost the wealthy. Um, Darren. I'm going to add a person to the airy, uh, to the high garden. Um, and this is a dragon. <laughs> I think that this is like, I want to say, I don't know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm going to keep with the categorization of dragons that happens in high fantasy. This is like a cloud dragon or something. And I think it's like massive. I think like half of it is in high garden and the rest is like coiled around like the bottom of the airy. And it likes the airy because it gets struck by lightning. So it's very invigorating for this nice little cloud dragon. Um, but I just, I have a picture, <clears throat> oh, what's, what's, it, what's their name? Um, obviously dragons are too ancient to care about gender, so I'm going to go with they, them. Okay. Um, their name is I think their name is going to be Lemma. Lemma. I want an epithet. Lemma the. <laughs> I don't know. Whatever. I'll just go with Lemma. I can't think of anything funny. <laughs> Lemma. <laughs> Yeah, I think they like High Garden because it's kind of policed like this, right? I think they have a, some feelings of privilege. Oh, yeah, cloud names are good. Lemma the. Oh, now I have to think of cloud names. But they like that elite status of it. They, I think they have like a, a sort of a superiority complex. <laughs> They've been around forever. Thanks for the airy. Now leave me alone. Lemma the syrup cumulus. Okay. <laughs> awesome. Uh, Josh, let's let's come to you. Um, all right. I would like to add a location to the airy as well. Um, this is going to be like the essentially the police force for the city because uh, it's so vertical that they have to be able to fly. So uh, if they want to police well, so the, it, it, maybe this is too on the nose, but I think we should call them the storm riders. Is everyone cool with that? Is that too yes. like <laughs> in joke or okay. I think that's perfect. Um, and so they um, specifically train. Um, you either have to be able to fly already, or they will train you and pair you up with some kind of intelligent flying creature 
uh, to be like your partner. Um, and so only the very rich um, can can generally be a part of this police force uh, because you have to pay for the academy and you have to pay for spells if you want to be able to fly or you have to pay to um, like get a, a creature that will help you fly or like have the uh, the symbiotic relationship there. So I think it's just very hard to get in uh, unless you are a creature that already knows how to fly. So you've got these kind of like low, uh, lower class uh, already flying creatures paired up with the like only the noble and elite on their dragons and griffins and stuff that they, um, you know, that are uh, their house pets or something like that almost. <clears throat> Even though they're intelligent as well, so uh, so yeah. Nice. Leandro, I'll come back to you as the lens. Um, I want to add a, probably another location to the third bazaar. I want to add an auction house to the place. Uh, let's call it the Gilded Basin. And then it's a fairly, I think it, it's a renowned auction house in the sense that it specializes in selling artifacts from different parts of the city's history. And there's different tiers of, you know, depending on how, how, um, how each artifact is priced or how much they're worth. Some of them are even magical. And like, it's important because, you know, if magic comes at a cost, but if it comes in an artifact, you know, it's, it's less costly on you because some of the magic's already in in that artifact. So I'd say it's it's frequented by a lot of like not just like rich people who want to add their collections, but also like, you know, poor people who like they they pulled up their savings for this one throw of the dice and they just find that one thing that turn their lives around, you know, this specific uh, I don't know, scepter that contains the breath of the last frost dragon or something like that. Nice. Yeah. And do you want to do a second one as well? Uh, sure. Uh, I'll add another rumor to the Lunarium. Mm -hmm. um, there's a rumor that there's a certain group of people in the city who want to build their own moon. Let me 
think I'll, I'll just leave it at that. Yeah. Just ostentation. They'll pay for it with ads. <laughs> Oh, that will be terrible because they'll be beating up in the <laughs> sky. Ugh. Um, Josh, uh, so uh, because you're the last to go before the lens, uh, you are going to add a group, faction, or faith. All right. Um, I think uh, I'd like to add a faction called the Menders. And I think these are uh, four spirits and uh, stone spirits and trees and rock creatures. And uh, they go about the city uh, repairing the structures that are crumbling and adding um, like flora and fauna to keep things nice and you know that's just what they what they do like that's uh what they love to do um nice Are they employed by somebody, or do they just do this? And and people, you know, they just do. I think that there is a um, since we're doing the dealing with the classism theme. I think that there are people who will pay them to come and like prioritize their area, um, but they're gonna just do whatever they want to do, even if they're not paid, kind of thing. Um, because it's just kind of what they what they like to do, you know. Um, it's it's like a hobby for for them kind of thing. Uh, so they're not going to do it at your pace, but if you pay them, they might. Nice. All right. So we're going to take a break here. Let's take a take five, uh, refill beverages, bio break, and whatnot. And when we come back, um, Michael, you're going to start us out as the, the next lens. Fabulous. Awesome.
it cool if I uh, amend something I wrote earlier? Is that too yeah, absolutely. If you want to adjust, uh, change a name, or make some changes. Just realized that the uh, Storm Riders are kind of more like a faction, so I'm going to make the location more like just an academy, I think. Oh, okay. I'm really surprised no one has made a made the moon neighborhood yet. <laughs> There's too much to do now. <laughs> yeah. I know. <laughs> no one has time for the moon. Oh, there's so much delicious stuff here. So, uh, so Michael, what do you want as the theme for this round? Ooh, artificial intelligence. I see. That's right. Too cool to pass up. Okay. Then uh, let's have you do that. Hmm. Okay. You know, I, I knew what the lens was going to be, but I didn't know what <laughs> sure. would come under it. So take your time, and you can do do two things. Right. Um. I think we need some kind of like wizard neighborhood where all the wizards like to hang out um we've got a row we've got a quarter so we need a port wizard port um and I, I imagine that it's uh, it's called a port because it's like on a ley line, ah. and that's where uh, the sort of magical good and trades uh, follow along as a as a source of uh, sure transport. Uh, I'm going to copy and paste in one of the uh, the the neighborhood mm. templates from the bottom for you. Thanks. Sorry about that. That's okay. Um, and within that location, or within that neighborhood, there's a location that uh, deals with crystalline intelligence. This is just one form of artificial, intel artificial intelligence, and it is um, the deals with the attunement of crystals in order to. Um, unlock their inner intelligence, which has always been there, just organized in such a way that it needs to be um, constrict, con, con, there's a word there, it's probably a magical word, uh, we don't know yet. Uh, so we'll call this location with these crystals, um, It's got to be a cavern. Uh, yeah, we'll call it the Crystal Cavern. Okay. I will type all the that stuff up.
I think I figured that out. <laughs> I sort of uh, cemented the the idea as I typed it out. But I'm mm -hmm. thinking, like with with these crystals, that like they uh, once they gain intelligence, they need a way to communicate with the outside world and interact with it. So I think that there's also like a technological component that you can use to allow these crystals to speak, to to move, um, probably like some robot stuff powered by magic crystals so yeah that's Neat. the crystal cavern oh i lots of ideas off of that um uh, i am going to at risk of making it even more sort of too much stuff i have a, a neighborhood that kind of parallels that um uh, that i'm going to put in this Uh, and uh, let me, so, so uh, this neighborhood is going to be called Red Tooth Town. And uh, uh, essentially, it's a neighborhood that has accumulated a large number of these non humanoid peoples. Um, that it, they're, it's not like they're not forced to live there or anything, it's just that they, they kind of gathered. Uh, and they can associate with their fellows. And I imagine that there are businesses, you know, places to eat, you know, shops and things like that that are tailored to these kinds of people who might have paws um, or things like that. Um, and I mentioned that we've got familiars there, maybe machines there, uh, uplifted monsters, all of that kind of uh, stuff that live there. So. Tooth Town. Um, so that's mine. Darren. Oh, man. Um, I think that I don't know. Traditional intelligence. <clears throat> okay, I think I'm going to add a person to the Gilded Basin. This is um, the auction auctioneer who is uh named Abel one they're a robot of some sort <laughs> <laughs> i gotta hack a tree later i think um um Abel one i i'm picturing is this sort of like I, well, I want Able One to be like a robot elf. <laughs> so Able One has these like elongated ears for no reason. Maybe they're antenna <laughs> for for them. Um, I think it's like I don't know if Able One's a crystal intelligence. Maybe no one knows. Um, I think Able One has always been at the Gilded Basin, and they've always been the auctioneer so i don't know if people necessarily like know how uh able one came to be sentient but um i'm picturing like a lot of like brass coverings um a lot of like strange wiring around organic components i mean like wood not like a liver <laughs> like wood and uh moss is somewhere in there you know things like that um probably like a little taller than most people, but also has a fantastic and calming voice, right? <laughs> and can speak very quickly.
Nice. <laughs> Josh. Uh, I like to add a location to the Underdark. <clears throat> and this is a place that um, AI creatures or constructs that have been rejected or refused or broken or just don't like living uh, among other um, non-AI creatures have kind of dug out a space for themselves down here. And, um, and a lot of people don't know about it, including the crews that are excavating for the new sewer system. So I imagine there could be um, a conflict there, or at the very least, some uh, unhappy AI who have been enjoying living all by themselves. Um, theme here and call it the spare space. Nice. Leandro. Mm, I kind of want to add, uh, I want to add a location to Wizard Port. Uh, I think it's this mix of a philosopher's college slash uh, theory, theory crafting place. And it's a place focused on memory, on, on learning how thought comes about. And I think they do that is, uh, well, they ask people to donate their their brains or their memories when when they die or whatnot, and they just like use magical means to like extract like you know memories or ideas or thoughts. And some of these maybe some of these memories or thoughts are prized in the in the underground because you know you can give them to artificial people and, and inject them with fake memories or whatnot. Uh, I think this place is called the Memorious College, and. Yeah, they are part, yeah, part um, practical wizards and part philosophers who are like, what is thought? You know, can we can we put thought in a bottle? And if we can, what does that make thought? Awesome. Anything else you want to add there? You're good. Good. All right, Michael, we come back to you. Yeah, I want to add a rumor to uh, the Memorious College. Um, I think that people are taking these memories um, in, and turning them into a drug. Ooh. Um, they're not sure who um, is manufacturing the drug, whether it's being stolen or, or what, but that's the source.
and that's that's all I'll add for that okay. lens. Go ahead and put that in, and uh, uh, then uh, we will swing back to Leandro, who will come up with a group, faction, or faith. Mm. Uh, I'll wait for I go finish. Okay. Um, I th I kind of want to add a religious thieves guild. It's, it's not a fantasy city if we don't have a thieves guild, right? Um, I think this group is fairly exclusive in that they only admit artificial intelligence or 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 artificial uh, humanoids or people. To their group they're called the relinquished and mm. i think Thanks. they're i think they're kind of they're, maybe they're kind of new to the city they're only not new but like uh, compared to other maybe other groups they're new and they they basically offer themselves as a hey, look where we're kind of artificial we, we we know how to get around they're they're kind of like consulting criminals in that sense but they have a secret purpose um what they want to do is they want to build their own god basically they kind of want to prove their <laughs> their existence by basically creating their own divinity that's kind of like their their big goal and i'll just add them here Nice, nice. Um, I think which makes me the lens, if I am correct. And I think for this round, uh, I am going to go with thinking about this. Following on from what Leandro said, uh, I'm going to say the gods. And I'm going to start with another neighborhood. I got to stop doing this. And So uh, the neighborhood is called uh, God's Pyre. Um, and essentially, I imagine that there's all kinds of turnover in heaven. And when pantheons get thrown down, they, they, the gods can either fade away, you know, transform, become legend or whatever. Or if they're stubborn and obnoxious, uh, they fall to the world itself. And... This is where those fallen gods gather in the city. Uh, and it's this sort of divine slum of, of fallen gods uh, there. Um, uh, and I'm going to put a location under there. Uh, I would call it the Invisible Temple, and essentially it's a very 
low rent school uh, where uh, uh, they they have various of these fallen gods that you know they hire as tutors and things like that to try and and teach various arcane arts and things like that. Um, and for those people in the know, it's pretty clearly a scam college, but there are those who come and, and think that they're going to learn at the feet of gods. Oh, that's mine there. Um, all right, so uh, Darren. Oh, man. <sighs> okay, gosh, there's so much to do here. Oh, I don't know. I, um, I don't know what I want to do. <clears throat> okay. I'm going to add a location to the Underdark. And this is going to be, uh, <laughs> yeah, when in doubt, add a dragon. That's good advice. <laughs> um, I'm going to add a location to the Underdark, and it is called um, I, I feel like I, I, it's got to have space in the name, because we have the, the empty space, the spare space. Uh, yeah. Like I'm gonna call it the sleeping place. Um, and as one knows, gods don't really die. Um, they can fade away to obscurity and the heavens or curse themselves to roam the earth below for all eternity. But sometimes gods get tired and when they're like over it, when they've had it, they go to the sleeping space. Or I think there's this bare, area that was discovered in the excavation that is probably generally untouched now that has just like uh, it's like a mausoleum i guess it's a mausoleum underground full of these like crypts essentially with sleeping gods who are probably going to be very pissy if you wake them up <laughs> nope that's not how you spell mausoleum that's that's not right I'm making up the tunes. I'm just gonna say Crips. I think Crips is not the right word, but oh my god. Okay, I think that was up. <laughs> Yeah, there's a spot that we're going to send adventurers to right there to go and get something. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm sure there was a god who fell asleep with something. Uh, Josh. Okay, so I think I'm going to add a person to the invisible temple. And uh, this person is like a, um, oh, like those uh, Hollywood star tour guides. Um, and you, you, like, people who aren't from Godspire will, will come in and they, you know, they want to see their favorite gods. And they, so they pay this person. And um, it, it's actually an, an AI. And, um, they take them around in these little, uh, you know, automated, 
vehicles and show them all the gods and talk about their history and how they fell and it's like a it's just a a um really neat thing for people who are interested in gods um and then to build on what Leandro was talking about, I think this person is definitely a relinquished and they do it um, so they can get all the juicy intel about the gods and how uh, how they fell, how they became gods, all that, so that, you know, we can eventually uh, build that god ourselves or build a god like them. So I think their name is... Uh, Previn. Mm -hmm. Previn's good. And uh, let's see. Nice. Divine recipe. <laughs> Leandra. Um, let's see. I, I was going to add a graveyard of the gods, but Darren uh, beat me to it. Uh, all right. Uh, I want to add it. Okay. I'll add a location to God's Pyre. I think that because, you know, fallen gods still get some sort of like worship or whatnot there's still people looking for their favor while the invisible temple is like that's one avenue but this one is for like haughtier gods who don't want to you know lower themselves into running a scam this is where like they still think they have a bit of power so this place is like where people come to like appeal to these uh these 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 fallen gods who who still think they got a bit of power. It's it, and think of it as like a theater, and the people who come to like uh, appeal for the favor of these fallen gods. They basically they basically put on a show. <laughs> they basically have to audition to these gods. Um, I think it's called the Brass Theater. Um, and. Yeah, it's basically, it uh, ostensibly it's a space for like for artists to like you know show their worship or the gods. But every now and then there will be these people who want who try to put on a show to try to like gain favor with some of these fallen gods. There's just a little bit of power with them, um, and those gods don't want to like don't want to run scams. They don't think they they have a bit of respect. Basically, they're. <laughs> um. Nice. Uh, Michael. I will be adding a person to uh, the firehouse within the third bazaar. This is Quirm, the god of intelligence. Uh, not intelligence, sorry, indulgence. Uh, this god wandered the mortal plane for eons, searching for earthly delights before finding satisfaction within the firehouse. Uh, and has now taken up residence there. He has shining golden skin, a round belly, and a cheerful disposition.
Quorum. I like that. Um, I am going to add a, another location to uh, Angel's Row. And this is the Court of Unfaith. Uh, essentially, it's an old institution that trains these faithless paladins. And uh, they patrol the city and limit the powers and activities of fallen gods who are outside of God's fire. So, so if, a, if, a, if a god starts abusing his authority or getting out of control or, or um, becoming a danger, uh, they, they patrol and track down the gods and bring them in uh, for, for trial, punishment, binding, whatever. There are lots of rumors about what they do with the gods and what they can do to the gods. Yes, atheist paladins. <laughs> um, Michael, uh, I'm going to have you give us a uh, faction, group, or faith. Sure. Let's have a union of... Um, I think... I don't want to say small gods or little gods because I think that that's a term that they find offensive. Um, so we're going to call them specific gods. So the union of specific gods um, work together to, uh, they're not necessarily fallen gods, um, but their domain is so specific and narrow that they don't tend to have very many worshipers each. So they all sort of band together uh, to further their interests and uh, cement their their place in the city. I like it. It will be fun coming up with all the kinds of membership of the uh, the specific uh, deities. Nice. So what I typically do when everybody has gone once as the lens um, is we've got a little more time. Uh, so we typically do one or two, however many, uh, open once arounds, essentially, where 
this gives us everybody a, a, a couple of chances to fill in things, um, uh, come up with things and, and add them and uh, whatever you want, wherever you want. Um, so we're going to do that. And uh, Darren, we're going to start with you on that. Um, is there anything that you're like, oh, I, I, I couldn't fit this with with these things, or there's something like a, a hacked tree or something that you want to definitely add uh, to the timeline? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I really wanted to put a hag in the Underdark. <laughs> Um, let me think. Let me see. What was I doing with that? Under dark. There it's okay. But oh yeah, yeah. I wanted to put a hag in the empty space. Um, some sort of connection with that. Like if you can find the empty space, you have to bargain with with the hag. <laughs> I just like this idea: a scorned woman living in the empty space who wields certain powers. <laughs> Is she a, a void hag? <laughs> this is how we're classifying hags in this world also. <laughs> What's her name in the void hag? Maybe she doesn't have a name. <laughs> um, um, the void hag. Let's see. I'm gonna say the void hag brokers with visitors who stumble upon the empty space so that you may use powers. Beware, deal with the void hag. Oh, put me in the void. That sounds like a Jason game, like a pilgrimage <laughs> to the void hag, something like that. <laughs> that's that'll be our pitch to jason you're like oh you should run a game in the city there's a void hag <laughs> <laughs> i have many more ideas but that's i'm good with that one for now then josh do you have something else you want to add uh yeah i want to add it's not really a location or a person i guess we'll add it as a location to the wizard port and it is a um a automatic train called the rambler and um it is an artificial intelligence it's a combination of like every kind of magic and technology was was um engineered to like a group of, of people came together and made this thing and um it is like the public transport for the town but it's uh, notoriously uh, risky to to get aboard because it could take you weird places or just instantly teleport to a part of town that you weren't expecting it to. It has a schedule it runs on, but uh, you can't really expect it to actually run on the schedule or go the places that it's scheduled to go, but it'll eventually get you where you want to go. Um, it might get someone else where they want to go before it gets you where you want to go, but it always ends up uh, getting you there eventually. Nice. Leandro? Um, hold on, because I have a lot of ideas, so I need to <laughs> uh, pin one down. 
Um, I kind of want to add like a small town square to Red Tooth Town. Um, it's kind of like a gathering spot. Um, um, I think the focal point, actually, you know what? Yeah, it's a small square. Its focal point is a massive tree. It's like this big, like, overgrown tree that's fruiting with like and the thing about this tree is that it's big but it it's a bit impossible in the sense that it's fruiting a lot of different flowers and fruits and whatnot on its branches and its leaves so it's just this big explosion of color um well it might i don't know well it could be hacked who knows uh, could be an adventure to try that out um Oh, I'm not sure what to call this tree. Um, it's name something wistful. Uh, the Tower to Heaven. There we go. <laughs> Let's see if you can hack that. Uh, yeah, so that's kind of like I wouldn't say that's a focal point red to town, but like that's definitely like it's a it's it's a gathering place. Like maybe it was brought there by it, it was planted there by. Well, we'll, we'll see. But yeah, that, it's just there now. Nice. Uh, I like that as a center point. Uh, it gives us a nice visual for the, the neighborhood. Uh, Michael. I want to canonize some of these jokes we've been making in the uh, side chat panel. So I think that there is an off um, a location within Angel's Row. Um, called the Upright Sorcerer's Office. And so you'll see all around town all these posters that are decrying like certain forms of magic or practices or peoples. Um, and they all come from this office and uh, this, this group. So if you uh, have any questions about those, you know where to go. And I think there's like a little address like printed at the bottom of each poster too. I like that. Maybe these are not like actual laws or anything. It's just like a citizens group of like, this is how it should be. Right. I like that the idea, maybe there's even like a Crime Stoppers line. <laughs> if you've seen suspect magic, you can contact us. Your magical message will be anonymous. Uh, I am going to put in, uh, and this is gonna be in the finder's quarter. Uh, this is going to be a thing called the mirror board. Um, and it, it might be a crystal thing, 
might be might be something made. It's been around for a long time. And basically, it's a magical job board that moves around. Um, uh, and if you're looking for someone to, to hire someone for a suspect job, you can go there and anonymously post the the job, and then mercenaries and adventurers can go there and they will be shown uh, jobs that fit with their qualifications. So um, you said it's like a mirror board, right? Yeah, I mentioned that it's it's like I mentioned like it's like like a moving, probably has like feet on it, uh, mirror board that kind of, hey, I imagine it shuffles around the neighborhood like stealthily, and people have to go and find it to put their jobs up, um, or to go and find a job there. So like, if you stand in front of it, does it like scan you and like determines what jobs? would fit based yeah, on it's like it's like the sorting hat okay <laughs> that for soft laws <laughs> oh man that that's very anxiety inducing <laughs> yeah here's a job for a bakery i'm not a baker <laughs> you look like a baker to me <laughs> and mirrors judging <laughs> all right darren um let's do uh another one of these okay Oh uh, man, uh, too many ideas, but I want to see more of Red Tooth Town, so I want to add a location. This is <clears throat> um, um, I forgot uh, all my like gr animal group names. <laughs> I want a, a nice little name uh, i think it's called like the um oh wait it's an it's a tavern it's a bar it's an inn it's a pub oh you know what there's always like bars that are like the rabbit's foot the griffin's beak or something but because these are all mostly non-humanoids i want it to be like the elf's ear <laughs> called the elf's ear um, and this is a tavern, like I said, but it's frequented by like explorers and naturalists who get together to talk about new paths they found, different like geographic features. They like to go out and like do cartography things. <laughs> a little like explorers club. Ready. So, awesome. uh, and uh, then we come to Josh. I really like the uh, Court of Unfaith. Uh, so I'm going to add a person to that. Um, this is called, uh, she's called Servitor Undalon, and she's a senior paladin who. Um, has bound so many gods over the years that she is pretty much a god herself and uh, uses their powers to trap and bind more gods um, and all kinds of crazy rumors about her um, you know she's um, typically reported being seen in multiple places at once she has all these crazy powers that that um, she calls magic, but are actually coming from these different gods that she's trapped. And um, so I imagine her being like this extremely intimidating presence um, about town. And there's all kinds of different groups who are trying to figure out if they need to try to do something about her um, overstepping her bounds, that kind of thing. Awesome. Leandro? 
Ooh. Um, I don't have another location to God's Pyre. I was thinking like, you know, yeah, there's a bunch of fallen gods who've been forgotten and whatnot. And there's like, you know, different kinds of gods. You know, there's sun gods, there's gods of wisdom and whatnot. But I kind of want to make a specific place for gods of death, Ooh. for the gods of the underworld. So like, I wouldn't say this is, I wouldn't say this is the goth club of God's fire, but like, no, this is kind of like a, I think they've got together because the thing with gods of the underworld is that they have, they still have their domains to look after, even if they're fallen, there's still people who fall to their realm. So this is kind of like their gathering place to look after all those other, it's like a pit in God's fire. You have to go down underneath. And I'm kind of thinking it's like a, it's almost like an anti chamber leading off to their specific underworlds. Yeah, it's like, yeah, it's like a big. I, mean, I like that name, the Black Gate. So I didn't have a name. I might take just take that then. Oh yeah, that is what they call it in Dungeon World, right? When you go, when you die, you have to go to the Black oh, Gate. Oh, that's that's yeah. what I thought that would be fitting. Yeah. Yeah, when you get yeah, however the last breath moves, I don't play Dungeon in a while. Uh, but yeah, no, I'm gonna take that name. The Black Cave. Nice. Michael? Yeah, so I had an idea uh, that within the Storm Riders, which are sort of seen as these kind of like privileged, like snooty police force, kind of like elite and look down on the little guy, um, there, there's one pair that's sort of like folk heroes. Um, and their names are uh, Kel and Crimson. So I think that these are like, he's like, a, Kel is like a dragon rider, but he's like forged this bond with Crimson instead of like buying her service or whatever. And they like fly around town and like stop bad guys in a cool way, you know? Nice. Not in like a rude way, you know? Together they fight crime. Awesome. Uh, I'm going to add a uh, group, actually, down to the, the factions and groups. I'm going to add a group called the Haunters of the Final Hour. And they're essentially... A group that believes 
in the sort of cyclical nature of the city and the collapse and ruin and rebirth. And they think that the city's time has come um, and now it needs to be burnt down and reborn. Um, and they, they work to disrupt order, create chaos, and they have these alabaster animal masks with the sort of spirals of the, the cycle uh, marked on them. Their, their agents wear those. Let's see that monster heart shout out. Oh, yeah. Uh, I would like to do just one more, uh, if you guys don't mind. Do one, one last go through, and it will add one more thing uh, uh, to, the, to the, our last mark on the city here. Darren, are you, are you ready? Yes. Um, <clears throat> I want to, I think, okay, yeah, I'm gonna go for it. I wanna add a person to Zegnova statue. <clears throat> this is the, um, um uh, this is the like head sculptor of the new statue that's going up um and i think i want to get real wacky and say that this person is um i want them to be a crystal intelligence but <laughs> a little twist is that there is a god who has like push its consciousness into a crystal and then you know has this proper technology to interface with the world um and is like building a statue the statue that they're building is of themselves <laughs> they're like hoodwinking their divinity back into the world or something i think maybe the the, the grand plan is to like get back into the heavens or whatever um <clears throat> Yeah, I'm gonna keep with the like functionary names. I think this is like it's just architect or the architect even. The architect. Um, what did I say? <laughs> uh, let's see. The god who pushed their crystal and then the awoken. I don't know if that's how it works. I don't know if God can re-deify themselves, but Ooh. they're trying. Now they can. <laughs> Uh, Josh. Oh gosh, this is so hard. Um, where is it? I think I'm going to add a person to the Lunarium and um, I think they are the, um, the only known uh, instance of their race mm. um, and they came from the moon but no one on the moon is, is like them. Um, and uh, they're kind of like a fortune teller or an oracle, and they hang out in the Lunarium and kind of maintain the portal. I imagine this is like not like some of the other magical portals, and um, maybe the rumor is that they made this portal in, in, uh, in the first place. And um, so, yeah, they're just uh, kind of an installation in the Lunarium and 
people like to hang out there. I imagine there's like a nice place to sit, get a drink or whatever um, while you're waiting for uh, people to show up or, or whatever to go through the portal. And uh, they're just always there. Neat. So think of a name for the, um, call them the interstellar. Opinions, full of opinions. Leandro. Uh, I want to add a person to the Crystal Cavern. I think they, this person is the first successful instance of unlocking crystalline intelligence. So they're kind of almost like the first of their kind. And they've been around for a while since then. But... <laughs> they're kind of important to the crystal cavern because you know they were the first and part of when these crystals they kind of retain a lot of where they've been and what they are so they have a lot of memories of places that they kind of they kind of don't know where they came from so they're trying to sort that out in their head all the time that's why they're important to crystal cavern and of course because they're they're the first um they're kind of almost like they're kind of almost like a pet to the Crystal Cavern, mm -hmm. uh, even though they built up their own memories and their own lives, they still kind of confuse it with like other memories from when they were Crystal. Yeah, they're very sad. Um, uh, uh, the name, their name is Never. You know, someday they just want to find out who they are. Nice. Michael. I have a person for the Brass Theater. And this is Jax Third Eye, uh, an orcish artist whose method involves entering a drug fueled fugue state and painting graven images of formless gods. Yep. Nice. <laughs> That's awesome. And of course, we've already got the drugs of memories that are out there on the table as well. All right, I am going to add to the wizard port. I'm going to add it one more location. And 
Let's see if I can copy this, my little text thing here. So this is the Drowned Palace. I imagine that in Wizard Port, there's actually a big pool. Um, and it, there's a tunnel that goes down, and there's an underwater sort of estate. And then that connects in turn to a tunnel, however long it takes to get out to the ocean. Um, and it's an access point for undersea peoples um, and aquatic things. Uh, and it was uh, crafted by a, a god of the undertow at some point in the past. All right. So I think, I think we're going to stop there. Um, uh, and uh, 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 so that's pretty cool. That's pretty neat. Um, uh, let's, let's take a moment to do uh, uh, things that you dug, things you want to do a shout out to. Uh, here we'll take just a tiny bit of debrief. Um, I do want to ask, I might like put this together, clean this up and put it as a blog post if no one objects. Okay, I'll probably probably do that this week just because I love these kinds of things and people should see these kinds of tools. So um, so I know that your regret is that we didn't have a biopunk ant, uh, Darren. Uh, but anything you want to give a shout out to? Think, thoughts on this process? Um, yeah, I think Microscope is just a super cool tool set to do like world generation like this. Um, and even like, it moves pretty fast. Like you set up the theme and then you get one shot unless you're the lens. Um, so there's so many ideas, but you don't get to do like like 75% of them. Um, but that's that's really interesting, right? Because it makes a lot, plenty of space in the setting for a multitude of ideas. And it really encourages you to like build off of things. So especially if you're like, oh, I have these three ideas for this theme. Like you can't do them because then you're going to move to the next theme. But it, it like enriches the setting so much more because it it forces you to get out of this like oh I have really great artificial intelligence ideas, but instead you need to do these three other themes also. That was really cool. Yeah, it's got very modest constraints, but they do push push you in interesting and new ways. Mm -hmm. Josh, uh, any thoughts that you have? I really like that we focused down onto a city instead of like a history or an entire planet or something like i think we with having it be a city there's all of these interactions that are the kind of implications between the different uh, regions and everything like everything has to make sense in the context of everything else and so i love how interconnected it is um yeah i just had a, had a great time i i um I think it does a good job of us always having ideas, but the amount of time we have seemed pretty perfect. Like, I think if we had kept going, we would have just been doing a lot of people or rumors or stuff. We could have added more stuff, of course, mm -hmm. but, but um, I'm really happy with the way it came out. Awesome. Awesome. Leandro? Yeah. Like, I think I, I basically was echo what they said. I love, I like very much that, this is my first time playing microscope of this sort. And what I've always, because I've only heard of it like fairly recently. So I'm always like, I'm always wondered how do you, what, what kind of, what's a formalized idea of world building is. And this is pretty much like, this kind of like my, this is kind of like my go-to example now because this flowed very well. And I think it helped as well that everyone was just willing to like, not just, you know, contribute a lot of cool ideas, but build on other people's ideas. And that's why this worked really well because I mean, shout outs to all y'all are very like generous and like, you know, like, oh my God, that was a cool idea. And it's like, all right, we can, let's add some new stuff or don't make this idea even better. So, and I, and I think definitely like, I mean, it helped that the structure was there too, so that we almost had to do that, but it it's so much better when everyone is like just really bought in and willing to go for it. Awesome. Awesome. Michael? Yeah, I had a great experience. Um, I definitely want to echo what, what previous folks have been saying. Um, I always thought Microscope was like a cool looking game and like, oh, I'm, I'm sure that it works, but like putting it into practice, especially online was really cool. Uh, I think Josh mentioned like how cool it was to like watch people type. <laughs> like he's like, ooh, what, are they, what word are they gonna put in next? Even that 
small micro thing was was exciting and interesting. Um, yeah, I had a fabulous time. I would play microscope again and again and again. And I, I think it is really a uh, promising like tool for like doing an adventure because of course now I want to have a campaign in this city, uh, you know, and whatever that would look like. My only regret is that we we didn't come up with a name for the city. I think that would really crystallize like what this place is. Um, but at the same time, I'm okay with it. We'll, we'll have to crowdsource that on the gauntlet. Yes. <laughs> do a raffle. Yes. Um, I do want to mention this, doing the city thing again, reinforced to me that I really love Microscope. I've used a lot of times to build campaigns. And I do like it where you've got kind of a constraint of the city. Um, one of the other things we've done to, to tighten microscope before is we've done a year. It's just a year of the history. And that makes you really think about the connections to other stuff and build, build on things and, and do it kind of as, as what happened in the last year before the campaign starts, that kind of thing. Um, uh, cause then everything's really tight and it's, it's fun to put those kinds of constraints. Um, the other thing is. I think microscope is a great trust building exercise. Uh, it is. Um, when I first put this to our group, um, they were uh, like years ago, my face to face group, they were like, oh no, no, I don't, people are good. Everyone's going to ruin it. They're going to ruin it. And, and I'm not sure and stuff. And, and once they did it, they felt much more comfortable. And it actually was the start of getting my face to face group to be much more collaborative in play was after having done microscope, they were much more willing to contribute to the world and and take up those things and feel like they had ownership of it. So um, it's, it's, it's really cool and I love this. So thank you so much. I couldn't think of a better birthday gift to me to build a city. So I'm very happy that, that all of you uh, came and did this. Um, Michael, thank you very much. Uh, I had somebody drop last minute and, and Michael popped up and uh, was able to come in last minute. I really appreciate you making uh, time out of your day for that. Um, so I'm going to stop the recording, uh, but I will post this up this, this week. And uh, I thank you so much uh, for doing this. It was great to, to play with all of you. Um, and I hope you have a great rest of your Saturday. I hope it isn't like stacked up like Darren's Friday was. Um, oh, I finally oh. get to rest. <laughs> we get to rest. Okay. Good. Awesome. Awesome. Have a good weekend, everybody. Great playing with you.